Good evening, DW Randomizer, and welcome to some Week 4 action in the 2023 Dragon Warrior Randomizer Winter League. I'm DK9146. Alongside me tonight is Ziggy, and we're going to see some fantastic runners uh, tonight. It looks like we have five runners taking a look at Aaron's screen there. I see a, a surprise Angel FM. Yeah, indeed. Um, I don't know if he wants to channel a little bit of Angel FM's legendary speed here in a very difficult race between four very talented runners, Tilo Kilo, Aaron, Ratliff, and Juef. Uh, all four of them being in... I would say Tilo's a bit more comfortable than the other players, but this is a race where none of our players want to be uh, in a losing position in tonight. Sorry, I got thrown off. I see Ratliff in chat while in the race. I was, I was a little thrown away there. Um, <laughs> um, but anyway, yeah, these runners are fantastic. Everybody in a little different position-wise here. We have Juf with uh, nine points, um, the highest of our... Uh, or Tilo's at 10, right? Yeah, Tilo's at 10. So those two are doing pretty well. Um, Tilo's automatically in if he gets a win tonight. Uh, that'll put him at 15, guaranteed to get at least 16. Juf is at least guaranteed a tiebreaker race. Uh, with a W tonight. Aaron would really like a W to really put himself in good position going into week four, while Ratliff must win to stay alive. So we'll see how this uh, race treats these runners, and uh, we should be on our way here in the next 10, 15 seconds. Really, I wonder what kind of seed we're going to have. We've seen all kinds with week four uh, flags. The flags tonight are vanilla-ish. We have met vanilla map shuffle location. Vanilla shops, very fast XP, random but consistent XP gold and vanilla spells. Let's see what we get at the start. Armor in the throne room along with some gold with that key. Yep, I think we're going with a pretty quick start for all of our players. Yeah, we'll see what they uh, decide to do, depending on location here. Looks like we're going to be... Oh, Vanilla Cantlin! <laughs> Good old Cantlin. The farthest away from everything else. So, our characters are going to have good armor, but they're going to be walking. And they're going to be walking a lot. Absolutely. This is one of those seeds that will truly punish those that get killed out on the overworld. So, possibly an early grind to get a little bit of extra agility and stats will go a long way. Uh, we have seen a couple things going on here as the runners are getting some of these initial kills in. Uh, saw a ghost on Aaron's side give a uh, hurt lord, but he was managing to take it down for a four. Uh, we did see Ratliff get six out of something and uh, get that next level as these runners are looking for something. Yep, looks like red slimes are six and magic rikis are seven. Yeah, Tilo found out about Hurtmore. I believe that was a magic Drake or a magician on his side that had the Hurtmore as well. Yep, and um, Juvef just found out Scorpions are in uh, the rightmost zone and they have 16 experience, which gives him level 3 immediately. Yeah, very nice. Looks like Ratliff's going to be the first one of our runners to try and push out. It is quite a little bit of a walk through several zones to get out of this starting area. Uh, and he's only at level 2, hasn't even picked up that heal spell at level 3 yet. Uh, for those of you out there that may not be aware, we're doing vanilla-ish. So we have a vanilla map tonight. Uh, these runners are going to have vanilla spell learning, so guaranteed having to go to level 17 to get that heal more spell. Uh, we have vanilla shops, permanent torch. Uh, the monsters will have random XP and gold, which is why we're kind of calling that out. But it will be consistent, so the lesser levels or the lesser enemies will still give lesser levels of experience in gold versus the higher enemies. Uh, some other things, we have some speed hacks, fast text, that's why things are flying by fast. Very fast XP, so we'll be tearing through these levels really quick. 8,000 is that key number for level 17. But the big one, rotated mirror dungeons. Uh, could throw a little wrench into these guys' exploration. It makes level 9 very good to... Um start exploring dungeons because at level 9 you get uh, the spell of Radiant and even if you're comfortable with dungeons sometimes it gets rotated or mirrored in a way that you're that can throw you off uh, having uh, Radiant going in these dungeons still helps even when you've played hundreds of seeds no, absolutely. I mean, you have any any particular floor in the dark dungeons can be in any one of eight um, configurations. You know, you have your your normal configuration, then all three turns that it has, and then you have your inverted converter configuration with all. Ooh, red dragons! 
in that zone as Tilo's trying to walk out. So they have to make it through a red dragon zone to escape Cantlin. And Golems as well. The thing that took Ratliff out about three steps away from where Tilo was taken out by a red dragon was a Golem. So the zone that has a lot of mountains and desert uh, right south of the Hawk's Nest position is a meaty one. Yeah, this is, uh, this could be, um, this could really pay off well for those that can get into a good grind. Unfortunately, there's not a lot of good grind zones nearby because of the tile sets available to the runners. Um, but you see Tilo kind of going out and around down to that one bridge that leads to where the vanilla token's normally located. Um, if you go all the way around here, go north along the coast, and then back around through that part of the map no one ever goes to unless you unless you get lost. You can bypass that zone, but it is a really long walk. Oh, Zhuif is almost... Oh, we saw that it is a cave in the hawk's nest position, but Zhuif gets sent back home by a golem. Good old punch more. Yeah, in a cave, I'm not sure that's even good news because you would think after that arduous journey, these runners will be looking for a town that they could possibly top off in, and now you know you have to go at least a second location before the hope of that showing up would arrive. Another thing that's happening is, uh, well, our heroes have kind of good HP growth, already 83 HP at level 7, but the agility didn't come in, and there's a lot of big enemies. We've seen the Red Dragon, we've seen the Golem, but there's also the Axe Knight in here, and at 27 agility, it's kind of hard to run from these. Oh yeah, just uh, just just a smidge. Um, I did see Aaron to you too over here uh, taking a, a look. We have uh, one diagonal zone right outside of Cantlin, just south of the wall to the east and uh did find a wraith knight there didn't uh had ran out of mp but ultimately that might be a a good zone for him to settle down in and get a few extra levels here yeah we've seen also the uh wolf lord there i think the wolf lord killed aaron but i didn't see exactly what was happening and never mind we have red dragons in that zone as well Oh, that's beautiful. Also, I don't think we've seen that before, but Grekima seems to have a DL2 breath, so nothing really easy in this um, Cantlin start for our players. With the possible exception of the Goldman, uh, Zhuif has been killing Goldman in the, uh, the zone. Is this a zone that has also red dragons, but the Goldman's worth 88 experience, so I feel like he's thinking it's worth... Uh, it's worth a trip. Gets 11 strength, 8 agility, 1 HP, and 4 MP at level 8. Yeah, I mean, it's paying off very, very well. Um, as we can see, he's not uh, deterred by these terrible metal slimes or that red dragon in hopes. And honestly, it's not that far from start, so if you die, you're not losing anything in the in the process. Although it does seem to have deterred Aaron from that zone that he saw, because he has not gone back down there since uh, taking that death to the red dragon. No, oh, Aaron is staying in zone 1, and I think he's going to stay there until he sees either some uh, good agility gain, or uh, maybe something that will allow him to take on tougher enemies. But yeah, it's not coming yet. I think it's... so. We might see uh, either 650 experience before we see that, or 1000 experience, which is what is required for a level 10. And both Tilo and Ratliff with synchronized deaths here. On the left side. <laughs> I loved it. Synchronized blue dragon deaths almost to the little flash frame and everything. It was fantastic. So now we got Tilo down in that zone Aaron saw earlier. Uh, may not have been down here yet. Werewolves down there, not ideal in addition to that red dragon. So that zone's getting a little less uh little less appealing now at this point. But we got the cave. He's and it's tablet. It is tablet, of course. Hey, you never know. One item here in Tablet Cave. Uh, Joff just trying to get his uh, orientation. Doesn't quite have the Radiant spell that comes at level 9 yet. So uh, trying to figure out the path that will get him to the stairs. He's got to go down. Uh, it's down and bottom left from where he came in. It's always opposite corner is the easiest way to remember. But it looks like he's uh, just going to go ahead and uh, give up on that. Oh, no. Now we're back in. Maybe he's open the map. Oh, he's getting his bearing, and... No, I think he's giving up. Or... No? No, that's I just how that. turned around he got. <laughs> he went right back to the start, poor guy, yeah. And this is what I was talking about. Random mirror dungeons can be very disorienting, uh, especially when you're looking at just a 3x3 subsection of it. 
Um, we'll see if you can figure out this bottom zone. It's not much easier to navigate than the top one with the way these uh, these different paths uh, interwine around each other. And also a little bit like when we play standard um, and we don't have Permatorch. Tablet can be dangerous because if you get lost, uh, you will you cannot die in it, so it can be very dangerous. But we get the Stones of Sunlight in the chest. It's not something that's going to help our players immediately, but it's always something that's uh, good to have. It's one of our three key items that we are going to need to make the Rainbow Drop to be able to go challenge the Dragon Lord. Yeah, but look over at Ratliff here. We got we got Kalen. And we got a copper sword pickup. So yeah, now we got Ratliff uh, Urban up a little bit here with that last little bit of gold. Tilo trying to do this around roundabout way to get around that red dragon zone that leads over and through that little bottom left place. Um, does manage to get away from that werewolf. So we're going to see some different enemy sets here, uh, depending on what he runs into up in these little desert tile single pathways. Uh, Aaron continuing the grind, uh, while Juf is also going to come across Cantlin. Redliff keeps finding some enemies to kill on the way, so experience-wise, he's really not doing too bad at 486. But Aaron's taking kind of a lead now, because instead of moving around, he's decided, okay, I'm just going to park my butt right there, and I'm going to grind until I feel comfortable going out, and he's getting pretty close to level 9 now. Yeah, he sure is. Just recently took the XP lead over Juf after Juf spent all that time in Tablet and now uh, running around Cantlin. But honestly, not that far ahead of him. And now Juf has that hand axe that's going to be able to take out some of these enemies a little more handily here. Not much coming out of out of level 9. Uh, 6 strength, 1 agility, 4 HP, and no MP. But Radiant. Oh, Ratliff just found keys, however. Yeah, Vanilla Garenham is the pay dirt for Key Town. Rimmeldur up there in the top left uh, must have at least a little bit of gold on him after a few kills and is uh, going to at least get a couple keys here. We'll see how much he's able to get. Oh, he's got he's got enough for the full Monty. Aaron, meanwhile, right. found an Axe Knight and uh, got sent back and hasn't seen the fun about the Red Dragon down there yet. He is the only runner that hasn't uh, gotten out of that starting area uh, too far yet. Drift just right behind Ratliff finds good old Rimmeldar. And it hurts a little bit less if you die after finding Rimmeldar because then, you know, you can check the treasury and what is in the basement of Tentagel. Yeah, Ratliff starts going east towards Vanilla Tablet and ultimately runs into an Armor Knight. Uh, does uh, get sent back, but he is going to be our first runner to check this treasury. Here we go. Andrew gets killed by a golem trying to run away. So we had gold, gold, wings, and the fighter ring in the treasury. I mean, it's a little bit of a treasury for sure. Uh, we do have Cantlin fairly close by, but it is through some scary zones. Uh, it'll... Uh, be determined if these runners want to risk doing a gold grind and trying to get that money safely out the Cantlin. I think Jeff didn't have any money, though, uh, getting into Rimbar. Yeah, he went in. He was out of resources as he headed up there. When he left Cantlin, he didn't have uh, enough money for resources, so he only had one MP left. He ultimately chose to top off and was hoping to get some gold, uh, but found some nasty enemies. And Red Dragons went into the zone further west and the southwest as well, so his uh, attempt to go circumvent that area did not play off, and uh, there he is, taking another trip back to Cape There is no escape from them. We have Swamp in Tankerville. Redliff's going to, uh, I believe he's going to go check on who do we have on the spike tile. Always good information to get. It's the golem. Uh, it's a terrible enemy this week. The golem, uh, while normally an in-game enemy in the standard flags that we play, uh, given 350 experience in the consistent flags due to the way they roll in the order of the enemies, typically are pretty nerfed, uh, given just double digits to maybe in that 100 area. Yeah, some, something around 80 to 120 at most. 
And it... So it's about a third of what they should be, <laughs> so you... It takes yes. way too long to kill them. Swamp back ends into Garenham here. So Ratliff is in Garenham, uh, getting three more chests here. Dragon Scale, and he's into a grind. Uh, looks like uh picked up either an herb or key. Another key, I believe. Yep. A torch. Not much on Garenham. I was kind of seeing if he might get into a gold grinder now. He is going to go ahead and burn a key versus running outside and uh, get down here into Garenham proper, though. But at least he's going to be able to buy a shield, which should help his uh, defenses a lot. And so far in the seed, I believe <laughs> it's going to be very welcome. Yeah, and based on the grass being outside, this is going to have to be Vanilla Rim. Um, so he'll be split in the middle of the second continent, and um, we'll see which direction he decides to go, up towards Vanilla, North, vanilla Swamp South or down south to the Vanilla Rainbow. Aaron again gets sent back home. Yeah, he's he's finding out what these other runners already had knowledge of is uh, there's some disgusting zones. Um, still, I, I I like that play Tilo did here. He he twice tried to go around the outside. Um, ultimately did make it out. He's up in the he's gotten the knowledge of tablet, got his stones, made it up, uh, got his copper sword out of Cantlin here. So he's gotten out of that at least initial jail by taking the long roundabout way that honestly, without map knowledge, most runners wouldn't even be aware it exists. here i believe elects to not go heal in cantlin because he wants to keep his money for the keys in rimaldar and the red dragon rears its ugly head again is in that zone on the west side of the path going down to the vanilla jerk cave uh sending ratliff back and uh Zhuif was unable to run away from a med and was also sent back again unable to uh get to Rimaldar with money to buy keys. Aaron gets sent back by a Normanite. This is exactly what we want to see when we see a Cantlin start. This is the best. Yes, yes. Um, from our perspective, this is uh, fantastic. I'm sure chat uh, perspective as well. These runners, um, I do feel for them. Um, I've been in races with this similar setup in the past and um, like it messes with the uh, with your head, and you start wondering: Is all the other people having the same issue I am? Did someone break through? What did they get? Um, so it can start messing with you, and you got to try and block that out and just focus on what you can control and uh, and try and make the best of it. Yep, that you panic. It's all panicking. Something. What am I doing now? Am I continuing to push? What am I trying? What What's the way out? And like. How our players have started with the armor, uh, which, I mean, it's a good thing because the heroes don't have a lot of MPs to heal back up um, right now. So it's always a battle of attrition trying to get out of Cantlin. During that time, Tilo managed to actually make it to Rimaldar. Yeah, I didn't see how much money he had on him total there. He definitely had enough to at least get a, a couple keys here. Um, enough to war. He must have topped off. He's going to go check this chest. Tilo gets his uh, empty herb there, while uh, Ratliff has decided to finally uh, go through Tablet now that he has his Radiant spell. Uh, he's going to get rewarded with his stones as well momentarily. Alright, so we got Tilo uh, popping around up here. Did get a little bit of gold. He's going to top off here in uh, Rim and see if he can make the furthest exploration. We've uh, we've gotten a little bit east of here, but not quite to the location to be able to do anything. Um, and on the opposite end, we'll see if Aaron can finally get past this elusive zone here and, and make it out onto the greater part of this map that the rest of the runners have seen a few times now. If Aaron still has experience advantage uh, from his very long grind at the beginning of the game, however, he's the only one of our players that actually hasn't made it yet uh, to Cantlin. Well, that 16 agility might help. Uh, nice agility, 16, got 20 MP on that level up to level 11 as well. Those are both very nice things to come across. We'll see if he can finally uh, parlay that into some uh, escape here. 
I think he's in good shape now. He's got, he's still got 42 MP. Very often he, he got to this point where he is right now and he only had like 10 MPs left. And right now I think he's in good shape to get to uh, Kandlin. Yeah, or at least here. Um, so he's going to be the last of our runners, but he will be picking up these stones finally. Well earned. Um, and uh, let's see how the rest of this goes. We got uh, Tilo backing down here to uh, Kantlin. Uh, maybe with those keys once to get those coordinates real fast. Must fight. No Ratliff coordinates gave us today. The, yeah, Ratless gave us the uh the the uh the, the show there. No coordinates. Um I know a lot of these runners uh tend to have that vanilla map with some coordinates that is available to everybody if you choose to use it. Um uh after last night I'm not a fan of it. Uh, but uh as uh as far as that goes, none of them are gonna have to use it. I feel you I've had issues trying to uh calculate some coordinates a couple times, mixing up uh north south and west east and going to the wrong place things like that i well, would Eric, understand if players yeah. wanted to get the princess instead of uh counting it that way <laughs> no exactly um uh, i know there's a few people that definitely go the purest route get the princess if it's necessary um counting uh isn't always frowned on here but we do have aaron finally getting up here he's gonna get cantlin uh we'll see if he has any gold picks up uh some weaponry here uh yeah he's got enough for a hand axe if he chooses to go to the bomb shop no don't don't buy the leather armor please oh did he actually buy oh, oh no oh. He did. Fast tech, speed hacks caused him to accidentally purchase it. So we see the full reset here. Uh, that's brutal. That is absolutely brutal. We'll see with knowledge how fast he can recover from that. But yeah, you giving up the Urdrix armor is almost a death sentence. Um, occasionally, you might see enough stats by you know level 17 to 22 with even the big gains here to to maybe circumvent the need. But yeah, that's rough. Um, you gotta feel bad, very, very bad for the man, but we'll see how he recovers here. I don't want to be very pessimistic because that that was almost a pure, at least fifteen minutes of grinding that he did there. There's not much you can do to recover here. It's really, really one of the worst situations you can put yourself in. I I I feel for Aaron here. He's, he's such a very such a solid player, and he's had a tough go at it in a few races in the last few weeks. No, absolutely agree. Um, well, that's a shame. We got Ratliff going to go back through just to give an update on everybody else. He's going back through the second continent here. We had Juf just get short of that town here again where we see Tilo uh, got armor knighted. Tilo is going to make it, and we have Toxness. Toxness. He's going to try to check which enemy it is. Um, I don't think he's really strong enough to kill anything other than the stone man, really. Uh, and he's gonna get a little bit lucky this week. Yeah, but Tilo's gonna get that um that big level up there, get that big bump in agility, uh, find out about the MP once he can top off as he heads down here towards the vanilla Tantajol camp or uh, Breck area, finds a couple caves. Ratliff, on the other hand, does find Grave. So we have Mountain on Tilo, Grave on Ratliff's side. Let's see what we can find through all these chests. The harp. A key and gold in uh, the first floor of Great. Is he going to dive or is he going to leave? Oh, he's diving. I agree with that move, actually. What When Grave is kind of far away from where you start, I believe it's a, it's a good idea to immediately dive if you can do it. And he's going to try and kill a stone man as well. Stoneman, uh, with this uh, flag set we have on with the consistent stats, do tend to roll up, and we see 210 experience from him and a level 11 level up for him. Very even levels uh, for all three um, Kilo, Ratliff, and Joe. I, I don't want to <laughs> keep Aaron out of this. I mean, I've got to feel bad about seeing this, but... This is a very, very close race uh, between Tilo, Ratliff, and Jeff right now. It sure is. Uh, and we saw the um, the the map uh, being rotated for Tilo. Uh, kind of threw him off. He kind of went the wrong way on the top of uh, Mountain there. Got himself turned around. Ratliff also goes into the wrong set of stairs here. Is in the bottom right corner of that floor where 
the fourth chest in Grave is and is trying to get himself oriented. Uh, so Matt, the uh, rotated dungeons are uh, kind of playing uh, a little hardball here. So far, nothing in uh, Mountain. Question, did uh, we see, I believe it was gold, if I'm not mistaken. Another 23 agility at level 12, holy cow. And red dragons. And he gets away. 75 agility is going to make it way easier to get away from red dragons than the 20, 30 agility we had for most of the seed. The last two levels are a huge boon uh, for our players for exploration. It's, it's going to open up the map a lot for all of our players. No, absolutely. And and what we're learning here as we see the Red Dragon Parade, uh, and he gets away with 5 HP, is that uh, Ratliff didn't see a Red Dragon in the top of Grave, which shares the same zone. So just kind of all that winding. Kind of got lucky he didn't have to run into any of those. Token Ooh, down in chest token. core. That Grave Dive is paying dividends for Ratliff right now. I believe at, with everything he's seen and the fact that his experience is not very far from Kilo, I believe he's in the lead right now. Yeah, that's that that's a huge pickup if you um if you do decide to maybe not dive grave at the uh, time you make it there because um obviously he's got all of the equipment minus sword um and we still have um Hawksness outstanding that could possibly be where that's allocated. But I don't believe we've seen Cole either. Oh yeah, very good call. We have Cole as well. Um so yeah, a couple locations that that sword could potentially be hiding, but I do agree. He's already down at chest four. Let's try and get chest five. Oh, and Jeff comes out of um, Swamp. Was very close to uh, the uh, the cave at the bottom of the Swamp Covenant and gets stopped by a red dragon. He will not be able to get into Grave at this time to pick up his token. Whereas Ratliff's coming mm -hmm. out and seeing the same red dragon on, I think, the same tile. Same fate? Same fate. Still, that's not bad. He, he managed to get here, and that red dragon got him the last time he came down here, so that, you know, at least he made it through it. But um, did get that death necklace at the bottom as well, which... Um, with the way HP's already at 102 at level 12, most likely could come into play depending on if they feel it's necessary. Indeed, Antilo found the jerk in uh, Swamp North Cave. And we found another town. That could be either Breconary or Coal, I believe, we have left remaining. And a nice trick. It's Breconary. Of course it's Breconary. Why would it be coal? Yeah, Breck, I guess it's okay for a top off here as we see. Uh, we most likely will not come back to this location again for any of these runners after they make that initial uh, that initial uh, foray into there. But he's going to head up here and check out this last location now. That, for us, at least, last location. For him, he hasn't been to the other side of Swamp yet. No, he managed, well, I think it's going to uh, be very good for him because he managed to explore the entire north of the main continent without dying. So now the only thing he's going to have left to explore will be the swamp continent. And by now, he knows swamp is in Tempajal. And there's the sword. The sword is in coal. Oh, that is a big find. Yeah, with um, vanilla spell learning, Hurtmore in this seed will not come until level 19, and it's a very high likelihood we will not ever see that. So, sword for that extra offense because we are swinging away is very, very nice. He looks, uh, I believe he's going to try to get a little bit of experience at 2750. He's going to have enough to cast the return. that time Aaron is sleeping a werewolf and he's trying to kill it and he just spent what well, how many turns was that was that six turns on that werewolf asleep that was amazing I was catching the tail end of that as well and was hoping for a crit there just to kind of give him a little a little boost in that experience there but um yeah that was uh that was pretty funny Jeff gets his nope message from the old man of Camplin. 
So question in chat, where is Harp? Harp is in grave um, top right chest, and then the token is in grave chest four, so you have to dive. So that's where the other two key items are located outside of the stones being in our tablet cave. And I believe the last thing we... I don't know if we've seen it, but Harp Shrine will be uh, at uh, the Swamp South location then. Oh, well, I believe that, that mm -hmm. we've seen everything at this point. Exactly. So um, a lot of walking necessary if you don't make it from Grave back up to there. Um, and then all the way back to the northeast from the Jerk from Vanilla Cantlin. Um, these guys are going to be putting in the miles in these uh, on this map today. Oh, I, I guess what happened with Tilo here, Tilo does not have all the information we have, so he probably believes one of the key items, either the harp or the token, is in Hawk's Oh yeah, he, he, has, he has very limited knowledge on what could be anywhere at this point based uh, comparison to us, so I don't mind this play at all. Um, and plus, you know, you never know, it could end up being a good grind. What do we got? Oh no, both, both are the golem. Well, he's got stop spell at least. Stop spell, but that's brutal. Yeah, the, 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 the worst possible spike you could get. Given a nice round 100, I guess that kind of rolled up and he was hiding his own flute. Yep, that's the circle of life. You have to defeat the golem to get the flute. And even with speed hacks, that flute takes like a second to play. Tilo not even bothering. Um, just walloping through there with that Urgic Sword and, uh, and all this uh, offense he's got. I mean, at 100 experience, of course it's way worse than a regular Golem, but it's not as terrible as it could have been. Uh, because we could not have ended up with a seed where getting level 17 to get heal more to go defeat a Dragonborn could have been a massive chore. But at 100 experience, I don't think it's going to be too bad. They also have hurt, it seems, uh, like a 25% hurt on the Golem. Yeah, so, you know, kind of kind of a, a kind of neutered golem there. He does get level 14 coming in with uh, nominal uh, stats there. Meanwhile, Aaron did get out onto the overworld here a little bit, re-picks up the stones, um, and takes out a Wraith Knight and is uh, hopefully going to get up there to Cantlin and uh, get that offense going and uh, try and get this uh, thing back on track. Or not. Sadly, the Red Dragon decides, nope. The red dragon is everywhere on the seed. Um, the red dragon is everywhere. Bottom of mountain, top of grave. Uh, that means they'll. Uh, that we've seen them. I think in four or five overworld zones. What down? Uh, two zones. Bottom left. We've seen them in that zone there. We've seen them um, down by the vanilla rainbow. So yeah, they're all over the place. Yeah, and we've seen Ratliff uh, get into Hawksness, and he didn't get to the spy tile. He actually got taken out by an armor knight. So Armor Knight's outside of Hawksness, Armor Knight's inside of Hawksness. Uh, nothing is sacred to these runners, man. The Dragon Lord put out all the stops trying to get these guys dead and uh, is doing a fairly good job doing it. So Aaron over here in the West uh, found him a zone that he wants to fight. I think it was with the uh, gold man there uh, that we saw uh, other runners uh, fighting earlier. So he is uh, trying to camp down there, get a little bit more here as uh, Joufal. Actually, the uh, Harp Exchange right there at Vanilla Brick. And Tilo's about to get his disappointment. Hello, that's another golem. Good luck getting level 17. And he escapes. And that's a, another red dragon zone. Then uh, the zone that hit would be uh, vanilla zone zero has red dragons along with stone men. I saw so uh, at least five red dragon zones now. Another armor knight zone. This this map is just brutal. Yeah, it's really tough. Uh, overworld. It, it's really a blessing that our players started with the armor because. This seed without an armor start would have been quite the challenge. No, absolutely agreed. Uh, even with the early heal, the, the extra defense um, and the heal walking uh, is so, so huge uh, for these runners for sure. So Tilo is making his first trip over here onto 
uh, the Swamp Continent. We'll see which direction he decides to go. We know south is the way that's needed, but it is definitely not safe. Nope. Here be dragon. Outside and inside the cave. Aaron trying to take down this uh, stone man here. Uh, using uh, heals, sleeps, and uh, very small physicals. Uh, we'll see if he can get a sleep block and maybe uh, pick me up a big, uh, big level here. Because that'd be level 10 for him. Very nicely done. He, d he takes it out. Uh, just uh, got 25% increase on his experience there on the uh, retry here as Tilo does get to the freebie cave. And unfortunately, it is empty. I believe it's a, it's a nerf, right? <laughs> I think I saw it on someone's screen earlier. I don't. I have no memory of which one it was, though. Um, either way, it's inconsequential for sure. As uh, Joif does get the coal, and it's going to be uh, rewarded with his sword. And I, I believe if you're either of our runners, I think all of our runners right now feel behind in this seed. It's been such a challenge to get anywhere. Uh, I'm anyone right now in this seed. Now, now we know, but probably Tilo is a little bit ahead of everyone. Um, if he manages to get to the grave, but if I'm not any players in this seed right now, I feel behind. I'm yeah, a little bit. Exactly, no, and you nailed it. Tilo has to get to this grave here to maintain um, that potential because Ratliff's a, a rainbow away, um, and we know that's right on the way to Cole. So if he can make it to this northeast, he is going to be full grind and go here in the next two minutes. He looks cleaned up everything else, however, so he will dive this grave. Yeah, Tilo with that nice experience there, uh, almost 2,000 over Ratliff right now. So um, Ratliff definitely would have to find out a grind. Look at the 292 Red Dragon as Tilo just slices right through it and gets a decent level there and his repel spell. Yeah, that's the big advantage he's got over Ratliff is that he got here with the sword. Ratliff got there with the... Um, the hand axe, and so Ratliff had to run away from every big enemy. Tilo is going to probably extract a lot of experience out of the grave, and right now it's finding actually what is a really, really good grind. It's gonna get him pretty close to level 17, like only 2,000 experience away almost. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Tilo opting to fight through the Red Dragons. Juf took a, took a chance at the first one, got hit kind of hard, and got scared off. Um, and so has opted to run from the two red dragons he saw is going to make it to the grave just behind Tilo, but, uh, without the red dragon knowledge of them being worth nearly 300 experience, um, and just kind of falling a little further behind in experience as a result of that. All right. So Tilo and Juf with their harp. Um, we'll see, uh, I will assume both will be diving here at this point. Um, both fighting the Red Dragon. Aaron, uh, back to Cantlin, getting that little initial bump here, uh, continuing to try and, uh, grind away here. If he can somehow make it to the Northeast, pick up that sword on this, uh, go out here and take some good grinds. And if we do get like a, a nasty Sherlock, he, he has a chance still to climb back into this. Uh, the, the initial knowledge really helps out the catch up fast. And I feel a little bit for Aaron. He's getting farther at level 10 than he did at level 11 before the uh, chainmail mishap. Yeah, absolutely. He's going to get up here to the northwest as long as he's uh, survivable. He will be picking up his keys and rim, uh, finding out about the disappointment in the shop. Ratliff looking for a grind has... Um, has um, Hold on a second. So Ratliff got the oh uh, Ratliff got the rainbow and then reversed back to Hawksness, thinking that maybe his sword's gonna be here. Uh, opted not to continue north to find the sword in Cole and is struggling with this golem. He's hoping for a stop spell and the golem refuses to stop spell. He just keeps punching and punching and punching. Oh, and he actually gets the... Oh, it's because Stop Spell had... No, it didn't land. He had the armor. Never mind. And he finds the flute. 
Yeah, he gets uh, he gets word of the flute and uh, immediately starts heading back to the east. Hopefully, uh, does, does decide to go north. He'll find Breck, then he'll find Cole, but he'll also find that sword if he does so. Another interesting tidbit, Tilo, once he got his uh, token out of the grave, decided to uh, outside out. He did not pick up the death necklace. So if the death necklace becomes something important uh, later on, he will not have it. Right now, the stats for our heroes already, I believe, you, you can win against a Dragon Lord at this level. But if Sherlock is as difficult as the rest of the seed has been, it's possible that um, our players are going to get to the Dragon Lord in kind of a weakened state where using the Death Necklace would allow you to win with, say, 64 MP or 56 MP, whereas it could be a little bit more difficult without the Death Necklace. We'll have to see uh, what 16 and 17 are going to give our players. No, absolutely, because right now uh, they're sitting at 90 agility, 90 agility at level 15. So agility is not a problem, uh, may still just be a number, but um, they're not going to be too worried about that. Strength is on point, HP is huge. Um, right now, even without any more HP gain, you're looking at possible two to three doubles as it stands right now. So yeah, this is completely winnable, as you said, with just a heal more spell um, and a little bit of luck here, which with that much agility, I'm not foreseeing problems, but you know how this game can be. Yes. Just a number in Aaron into the bottom of the mountain, immediately greeted by a red dragon. Still just level 11. I think he's in the 50s for agility, if I'm not mistaken, around there. Uh, then finds a stone man that doesn't want to go to sleep, but uh, uh, does get off a crit on it and should be able to take it out. We'll see if he can clear the bottom of this mountain cave, which we uh, know isn't really helpful. All right, so we got... Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> I was just about to say Tilo is killing everything in sight and he's gaining a lot of experience uh -huh. out of it. And level 16 was uh, a lot of HP and a lot of MP. I, I don't think we have to think about Death Necklace anymore. You won't need it at all. Yeah, that's a, I was going to comment on that. And then simultaneously, we had Tilo going to go wrap up his homework here, uh, go get his turn-ins handled, while Ratliff has decided to head northeast. He has just come across Breconary. Uh, maybe pick up some... Yeah, uh, he's walking all over the place. Uh, maybe thinking about selling, picking up some fairy waters. So uh, let's just visit the neighbors. There we go. We're going up to the fairy water shop. But if he goes to the last location, he'll get that sword. The sword has been really the the big difference so far in this scene. The second Tilo picked it up, his experience. Uh, he had also a little bit of an experience lead, but the second he picked up this word, it really exploded. Because he was able to... Like, all of our uh, other players had to run away from red dragons and immediately started wailing on them. Yeah, exactly. So Tilo's gonna go in the swamp cave, and I don't believe he's checked the spike, so he's about to find out the disappointment of the golem, but... Or no, he was he the one grinding on him? Uh, yeah, you saw both of them. You saw both of the golems. Yeah. yeah, then, I mean, it's 100 a pop, and you're you're doing a lot of damage with a ton of HP here. Or he might even opt at this level. Oh, no, he didn't top off. Um, he can top off on the other side, though. He might even opt to do a dive and grind. Um, we have enough right now to make this winnable if you do want to go that route. Andrew is going to try to defeat uh, one more golem. Oh, he's got the flute, so he must have defeated the golem before. Yeah, he just decided to sit here and start grinding. Unfortunately, Juf got ousted from grave early, um, and we'll have to make that long trek back and dive to be able to get his token. So that really set him back. So while Ratliff's back a little bit on experience, uh, should be able to, in theory, be able to make up that difference. Might be in. Uh, in line for at least what looks like on stream to be second place right now um, in the order of what these uh, runners are looking. But as we know, anything can go here. As long as we haven't seen what's in Charlock, uh, we don't know what's going what's to happen. All right, we got Aaron through the Swamp Cave uh, finding out about Garenham here. Um, meanwhile, Tilo is opting to do that dive and grind. Uh, he's about 800 and change short of that level 17 that we need for Healmore, or 7 change, uh, but is walking that direction. So we'll see how this dive and grind option goes for him here as Ratliff is trying to just get a grind going, period. 
Yeah, Tilo knows the Red Dragons give a lot of experience, the Stonemen give a lot of experience, and the Armored Knights give a lot of experience. So I believe he's very comfortable in getting level 17, and he knows he won't need more MP than that to defeat the Dragon Lord. So I agree with this move a lot. It's a great decision. Oh, no, absolutely agree. Uh, 100% I see those stats. I think you have to go, especially since he had his homework all done there. So here we go. First runner into Sherlock. We'll see how friendly this is. Uh, we'll see level 17 momentarily. Maybe it'll give us some decent stat bumps again or not. Uh, Ratliff on a full grind here. Joff uh, taking on some good enemies, but has to get back to the grave. And Aaron doing whatever he can possibly do to try and get himself back into this. And 90 agility. I have to try three times to run away from a stoneman. The usual. Oh, Blue Dragons also rolled pretty high at 249 experience. It's, I think it's the first one we've seen. Yeah, I'm not sure if I saw a Blue Dragon earlier or not. And uh, this is my favorite part of this. What, what, what directions are the runners going to go as they try to figure out how the uh, dungeons have flipped or rotated here? Um, he got his bearings pretty quick, at least on this first floor. That's always the the first thing that you're going to hear pretty much on every floor from every player is one bunk as we try to go in the regular direction. And then we go, oh yeah, no, that's right. We have to move the other direction. This fight will be enough for level 17. Let's see what it gives. Eh, doesn't change much. Uh, most of the games is MP and of course he cannot recover his MP and Charlock. But I think, yeah, with, with his current stats, he's, he's gonna be very comfortably fighting the Dragon Lord. He's gonna get a lot of doubles with 140 HP, and also 86 defense is pretty much the gold standard. Uh, you will get punched maximum for 48, which is the same maximum as the breath, so you know how much uh, damage you can take before you can... You have to use a heal more. No, I absolutely agree. Um, so we should see nothing but runs, most likely, from Tilo here on out. Um, as he makes the uh, turn, rightly notices the wrong set of stairs, goes right to get to the downstairs, and now is into zone three. Aaron manages to make his way to Grave. Uh, immediately uh, greeted by a red dragon. He's gotten away from a couple of these, but unfortunately still level 13. Agility is okay, but not great, but does manage on the last attempt there to get away. Um, kind of update on the other two here. We did get Juf to pick up that token. He's still got to complete some more experience. He's only 1,100 shy of that level, but has to walk all the way around to go get those uh, turn-ins handled. Uh, so that's going to eat up a little bit of time as Ratliff continues to, uh, to comb the desert here, looking for some experience himself. And Tilo is on the final floor of Sherlock, and he's fighting red dragons. He's not taking a chance trying to run away and maybe failing seven or eight times and losing a heal more. He's just beating them up. He's still got a few herbs. He's feeling confident right now in his ability to win. And the final spike tile is the Armor Knight, and he is going to begin his fight against the Dragon Lord very soon. All he right. shot that armor knight. Holy yeah, man. he too shot that armor knight. Got greeted by a wizard. Gets in here. It's going to be declared a fool. And here we go. Dragon Lord fight time. We'll uh, we'll, we'll kind of watch it. It's going to go pretty fast. So um, hold on to your seatbelts. Now we're at 36 after two attacks immediately. Yeah, gets that opening double um, in a... extremely good position. And another double. I don't think he rates to win this with still four heal mores remaining. He's in a very comfortable position. Nothing but a miss menu would put him in a position to lose this fight, I believe. Doesn't take the gamble at 48, no reason. And he wins the fight. GG in the chat. Tilo Tilo manages to finish this very difficult seed under 50 minutes, so a round of applause for him. That was extremely well played.
No, absolutely agreed. Um, well, well played, start to finish. Um, hit the right directions definitely helps. Uh, but he he chose his battles. He he showed some map knowledge of this vanilla map early on with that all the way around thing there. Um, but ultimately knew his battles he could take, fighting that red dragon sooner than Juf was willing to try um, when they were almost neck and neck on experience and equipment. Um, and with that big win today, um, Tilo. Uh, is in the uh i think he's in right yeah tilo is yeah, in. He's qualified he is officially qualified for the playoffs of this year winter tournament yeah so as these other runners are going here we're going to start this week as these races continue we'll see some of the playoff pictures start to to take shape um, others will have like final notes on what they'll need in order to be able to continue as we do see some of those um, some of those runners do end up being eliminated as well so um, but yeah with that win Tilo is in unfortunately Ratliff will be out but he is poised to finish second here um, as he is making his way into Sherlock right now as Juf is finalizing uh, his rainbow pickup and is already at 17 Ratliff still needs a little bit yeah Ratliff is taking the same decision Tilo took and going midway through 16 to uh, finish a level in Sherlock since, well, he found a decent grinded desert um, close to, um, well, what is usually the Tablet Cave, but it, was, it wasn't it was amazing. Uh, there was no real amazing grind spot. I believe killing red dragons on the way was the optimal move. No, I would agree with that. Um, there wasn't a great ground spot. Obviously, our spikes were terrible in the grand scheme of everything. Um, picking and choosing, and sometimes the exploration grind ultimately is the better grind than sitting down. Um, but he got his level 17 here. We'll see if he can keep these resources get down for what ultimately should be a fairly free fight, especially if he for what it decides to throw on that death necklace on top of that 139 attack power. Yeah, and what was the big change here? I, I believe, like, a big difference was that coming out of Rimaldar, Ratliff died and then went to immediately explore the Swamp Continent, which was a great move. I mean, you've got three locations that are pretty close to where you are. Um, Tilo didn't die and explored the rest, the northern part of the main continent and managed to get to the Sword, and that was a very big swing in that race, because before that, I believe Ratliff came into Rimaldor a little bit ahead. He was he was ahead in the race, Ratliff had a very, very good start. But with an overlord, uh, an overlord, an overworld that was also an overlord like that, like sometimes the map is the end boss of the game. And that was the case mm -hmm. in this game. No, absolutely. I mean, exploration with this with this game, regardless of flags that we're playing, is absolutely pivotal. And and, and things went really well for Tilo on that. And with that game, we have tonight's race winner and playoff qualifier, Tilo. Tilo joining us in the booth. GGs, how you feeling? Uh, that was fun. I uh, I I uh, I mean, I'm happy to get first because I mean, I hadn't actually looked at the the stats so far. But you're saying 15, 16 is a guaranteed qualifier at this point. Yeah, that's what the, that's what they're telling me. All right, I'll I'll take that. I thought, you know, I I, I was thinking I wanted to get six points one way or another, whether or not it was getting a five or one, or whether it was arch fielding my way there. Um, either way, uh, I'm happy now. Well, what we were looking at at the beginning is that pretty much anyone that ended up with a very difficult race tonight would have been in a difficult position to make the playoffs. So. Yeah, get, getting in there in week four has, has to feel good. Week five is going to be a difficult flag set with the advent standard plus uh, heal before, heal hurt before more. So, how do you feel? I mean, I haven't looked at the, the flag set, so I can't really say much about how I feel. I saw something saying there's stair shuffle again, which uh, is, is an interesting thing. I enjoy it, but it also is very much an equalizer. Uh, that adds a, a bit of randomness to things that, uh, you know, yeah. It, so, so it, it's going to be fun. It's, it'll be a fun one, at least for me, for 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 my group, if everybody's already qualified, because then you can you can kind of have some fun with it. Um, I'm curious if anybody uh, else adopted my strategy of going and hiding in the uh, the desert north of Cantlin to grind. 
No, and no. I, that's actually what I wanted to ask you because that's fantastic map knowledge there uh, to know you can go down and around through that swamp. Um, and you were the only one of our runners that even went across that bridge, let alone tried to do that entire loop. Everybody kind of tried to get out of the Camden Jail in a little bit of a different way. Ratliff just face planted uh, into the map until he got to uh, Camden and Rimaldar. Uh, Aaron just grinded in the forest for a very long time. You have uh, found the Goldman in the Goldman Red Dragon Stoneman zone and fought there and got kills there. And you went around and ended up grinding in the, what was zone 2 but in the desert. Uh, so that was kind of interesting. My plan hadn't necessarily been to grind in zone 2, uh, but I saw all those dragons telling me you may, shall not pass over here and I knew there was a path to get over the round where I didn't have to go through that zone so I was hoping to get through that of course I ran into the red dragon in the southeast but I was like okay I only need like 12 steps through this thing to get from out of these this little zone right here so I was hoping I could do that um, and there was other good stuff in there with the wolf lord and the wraith knight so uh, I made it through and then everything from there was pretty much smooth sailing I'm going to stop you for a little second yep. here because Ratliff just completed the seed and is going to come in in second place in 54 minutes and one second. Um, I don't have the race room open. What is the, 54.09 uh... official race time. Okay. And right behind him is going to be Juf as long as he... Uh... And there we go. Get GG's out for Juf as well. We'll get his official time here uh, in a moment. And we'll see what Aaron opts to do here. Unfortunately, the um, selling of the armor, um, once he finally made it to Cantlin, a huge, huge setback here. But Aaron fought back tremendously, already back to level 15, or already up to level 15, uh, getting some of this exploration, and unfortunately does still have to get back to the grave uh, to get that token since he got sent out of there early. But is, uh, we'll see if he opts to finish here or not after he gets this knowledge. Wait, he sold the armor? Yeah, he accidentally bought yeah. uh, a chainmail when he got to Cantlin and had to restart about 18 minutes in. Oh, that's unfortunate. Um, yeah, I actually almost did the same thing. I the, I went and I bought the uh, bought the copper sword, and then I was like, okay, oh, I buy the chainmail too. And then I realized before I did that, and I was like, oh man, then I could have spent money to do the hand axe. I was like, you know what? No, I'm going to spend money on all sorts of other things to make it look like buying this copper sword was my initial plan to begin with. Ah, that's pretty funny. No, and, and, and honestly, I think he stops himself if it wasn't for the fast tech speed hacks. You can see the realization happening, but it was like just too late because of the of the movement of all the uh, menus. Yeah, that makes sense. That's unfortunate. But here we go. We got him in here getting the sword and coal here momentarily, and uh, that'll give him the knowledge he needs to know that either Hawksness or Graves going to have his token. So we'll see which uh, way he decides to go. Um, looks like uh, after that knowledge, uh, we do got a forfeit from Aaron. So get those GGs out, man. Very well uh, played back. He he fought very very tirelessly to try and get back into this, and actually uh, had a really successful second run. I mean, all he had to do at this point was go back to the grave, grab the token, uh, get the. Um the rainbow drop and go straight and finish the level, the leveling in Sherlock. So he was maybe after like that 18 minute mishap, maybe 10 to 12 minutes behind. So yeah, that was well fought on the second attempt. Yeah, a little bit of map knowledge goes a long way towards getting going again. Plus, he had a lot better RNG getting out onto the map, uh, uh, definitely facing those difficulties. We'll see if we can get uh, Juf and Ratliff here. They're both in the waiting room uh, and get their opinions on this seat as well. And that was <clears throat> for anyone with uh, the ability to pull them into the the race or to the commentary room because I sure as heck don't. There we go. I appreciate that. Uh, GG's. Uh, we have our second and third place runners, uh, Ratliff the Rat and uh, Juf joining us. Uh, we'll start with Ratliff. How are you feeling about this one? Oh, thank you. Uh, I mean, it was enjoyable. I, I, I didn't take it too seriously because I know I'm quite low in the standings. So it was low pressure. And uh, I mean... Maybe maybe my search uh, order was pretty good, but I had a few deaths that kind of took up some time. So overall, it was fine. So not frustrating in any way. 
Yeah, I think everybody got a couple of those deaths. Um, you had a couple nasty ones there. The red dragon, the first time you got down near the grave, uh, just shy of that. Uh, did manage to make it through grave, though, and pick up all that equipment, uh, including the death necklace out of grave five there uh, when you finally made it back down there. But yeah, the overall was pretty nasty. There was multiple red dragon zones, including in the caves. The armor knights were all over the place. It was, uh, they were, this, this seed really had it in for you guys. Uh, there was a couple of golems death as well as I saw. Like, it was all the big enemies punching you left and right. Well, Jeff, how do you feel about this one now that you uh, you got in here just behind Ratliff, uh, third place, getting uh, two points still, though? Well, I feel like my uh, physical exercise is done for a while now. I've done uh, quite a lot of walking. And uh, <laughs> otherwise, uh, it, it was a fun seat, definitely uh, very uh, challenging in some ways. Uh, I'm very disappointed in two deaths, in particular the one uh, when I was in Grave, and uh, I was pretty close to getting the, the final... Uh, item to uh, to get the rainbow drop it would have saved me a ton of walking and also the very one of the very first deaths uh, when i was in rimmel bar and opted for the inn instead of the key and then died and went back to uh, cantlin tentadil so uh, uh but it was fun uh, i love how strong we were by the end it was crazy i didn't even bother uh, calculating how many swings I needed. I just knew it was okay whether I used the death necklace or not. I'm not even sure. Did I even have the death necklace? I'm not even sure. No, I don't think you got it. I think no. you got the token and you just exited a grave immediately because that was the last thing you needed. Oh, so necklace was in the bottom of grave? Yep, it was grave five. So no, you you nailed the two things I was marked down here, Juf. Uh, yeah, we I saw you, and I I'll, I'll be honest, I think it was the right play as well. Um, how were you to know that every single zone wanted to destroy your face? Um, by the time you made it up the vanilla Garenham, but um, um, I think that was probably the right play just because you were so far out, you wanted to keep that exploration plus get the keys. Um, and then yeah, the the token drive uh, was definitely the uh, sealer. T Tealer probably had a small. Uh, lead on experience at the time that you guys went in the grave, but you and him were in grave almost in lockstep at level 13 or 14, I believe, um, where he was able to get all of the items and you uh, you fell short of that token, and that's where we saw the difference. Well, I'm super happy because then that must have been a, a real nice race to watch. And uh, again, we have uh, our fourth place runner, Aaron, to you too, joining us. Uh, GG, Aaron, uh, I think we all know how you're probably feeling at this point. Uh, a couple of the runners here don't know what happened, though. Um, do you want to take us through what, what you were thinking at that moment? I mean, not, not really, but uh, yeah, so I, I decided to sell the armor in Cantlin, which was a genius move 20 minutes into the race. Yeah, and, and 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 I mean, I'm just speculating. I'm assuming the fast tech speed hacks really got you there, because I, I, I could see the realization, but it was like the the train had already gone too far, type thing. This is something I, I've done like four times now, and every time I do it, it's when we get armor right at the beginning and we don't see a town forever, because it just I completely lose track of the fact that I have any gear if uh, it takes you know 20 minutes to get to a town. No, that's completely understandable because uh, at the beginning, you were the one runner that truly devoted themselves to the grind, um, testing some of the waters around the other uh, areas, finding out about that red dragon a couple steps southeast of start, right? But um, you really devoted yourself to that and did get out to a, a decent enough early experience lead while the other runners were trying other methods. Um, so um, I think it was working really well for you up to that point. Yeah, I, uh, I don't know. It seemed like... If I got the same sort of luck after, uh, you know, if I hadn't done that, but I got like that getting, you know, killed by the red dragon over by uh, on the path to the east, it probably would have wound up the same way, you know, and getting killed by the red dragon in grave. Like there was enough other stuff that uh, if that had stayed true, I don't think it really would have mattered. I'd probably be in last anyway, just probably actually finishing. Actually, you were not in that bad a position. Um, so you were the last to get to Cantlin. Uh, that is true. You grinded a little bit longer than everybody else. And uh, everybody got to Cantlin at a lower level. You were a little bit unlucky on that. But you were about uh, three to 400 experience ahead of everybody else with mostly the same knowledge as everyone. The only thing you hadn't seen at that point that other players had seen was Rimmeldar. So you were not in that bad a position, actually. Everybody really struggled to get out of Cantlin. It was a real struggle.
Yeah, I think, I don't know. I, I made another really early mistake that was irritating to me. Like I'm really bad at seeing what zone I'm in when I get killed by something. And you know that uh, the zone in the vanilla Hawksness area had a, an AK-47 right there. And I got killed by it, you know, steps away from, you know, Tablet Cave. So then I went back and did the exact same thing again, walked in that zone for no good reason. I don't know. I, I felt like the, the grinding, maybe I should have done one more level in that crappy uh, zone two zone. But then honestly, it might have been worth risking the, uh, the uh, Axe Knight and the Golem to continue down in that zone down there because everything else was actually really good to fight. So I'm just going to ask for clarification here. Were there a lot of armored knights over in the world? Because I didn't see one until Sherlock. I will say I saw at least three zones with armor knights that were outside of the red dragon zones, which of there was at least five overworld red dragon zones. <laughs> okay, so... Uh... That's just funny because I think DK has been trolling me in the last few days, being like, every time I get killed by a red dragon, he'd be like, you know, Tilo in the post game comments, there were red dragons there. And, uh, you know, Axe Knights or Armor Knights are pretty close, so I'll take it. That's, that's funny. I do. I, oh my God, I forgot all about that. And I had been. That was pretty funny. Um, I mean, and, and it's inevitable that RNG is going to go. Um, a little sided on somebody else um, for that to happen, but um, wow. Um, any, any other thoughts on this race from any of the runners before we uh, talk about the next race tomorrow night and uh, upcoming things? Uh, just thanks everyone for uh, putting on the show. Uh, I'm glad that I gave Tilo a, a chance to beat Angel. GG's to all the yep. other runners, and again, uh, thank you so much, uh, DK, Ziggy, Archfield, RG, and Shihali for uh, the wonderful uh, restream. It's always a great pleasure for everyone. All right, thank you, everyone. Uh, so we've got some nice races still coming on. Uh, not all races have been scheduled, but we've already got three that are scheduled, including one that is for tomorrow evening at 10 p.m. Eastern. It's going to be, again, a very high-level race with High Spirits, Beta Strep, Crystal, and Jay Cooper in Group 2 playing tomorrow. Uh, on Friday, we're going to uh, have a race between the Seawolf, Sandcraft, Bob Pineapple, and Sassage Link at uh, 7 p.m. Eastern. And on Sunday... Um, I don't know if you really want to watch that one. Um, it's going to be between Vinicus, Beef Supreme TV, Edge, and some guy named Ziggy. I don't know who he is. Um, but that's going to be Sunday at 2 p.m. I believe a couple more have been scheduled uh, on Saturday as well uh, recently, but they're still not in the schedule. Uh, Stan Troid, Silly Dabbit, Stags, and Nemenva will play. Uh, in the afternoon Saturday, and RG Scarlet Shadow, Yakko Wako, and Jibun TR is going to play are going to play at 8 p.m. on Saturday. So there's a lot of DWR coming on soon this week. If you enjoyed the crazy action of week four seeds with the speed hacks and the vanilla map, there is more coming. Absolutely, no. Some fantastic action. Only three of ten down so far. So it looks like we're going to be raiding RPG Limit Break here momentarily. So stick around. Let's we'll see what kind of action they got going on there. Um, for my runners tonight, make sure you double check Aaron's name um, in the great in the race if you do watch this vod back and in, in, in his uh, in his uh, sprite. It was fantastic. But uh, for our restreamer Archfield Monk, our trackers RG365 and Shahali, and my co-commentator Ziggy, I was DK9146. Everybody, have a wonderful evening. Goodbye.